Okay, one of the awesome things that many people can do in video games is uh, stuff that they would not ordinarily be able to do in real life. Like, not all of us are going to be getting behind the cockpit of a fighter jet, Tom Cruise style, like in Top Gun. And not all of us have the uh, skill or je ne sais quoi coordination of, say, Tony Hawk, like in the original movie Police Academy, where he was a stunt double and had uh, David Spade doing the acting portion as a street thug with a skateboard. And it had actually Tony Hawk doing the skateboarding sections. And I love skateboarding movies. I mean, Gleam in the Cube with uh, River Phoenix is one of my absolute favorites of all time. I've watched it so many times. I'm going to have to watch it again now that I remember. But uh, this is another game that I truly want to get fixed up here. Uh, let's see here. The controls are uh, not really uh, optimal for the mini classics here. You see what I mean here? Because the idea of the game is to try to do 720s. And I can barely spend like one time. I can barely do a 360. I want to do a 720. It's not so easy to do with these controls. Look at this. And on top of that, I have a timer that once it goes down, I have a swarm of beasts come out and go, Skate or Die! And we all know what happened with Skate or Die, and yes, uh, Konami came out with a game after it, but right now I'm going to shut down, and I'm going to get the update installed real quick with the work in progress here, and I'm going to be running this uh, with 720s once I shut the system down. So let's shut down, and I'll be right back with the fixed update. Okay, we're going to up the ante here a little bit, and then we're going to play some more 720 degree shenanigans, a game that easily takes a minute to learn, a lifetime to master, much like the likes of Othello, and arcade-wise, uh, Haunted Castle and Willow, two games that no matter how many quarters you insert, you still might never beat any of these three games. But uh, we're going to do a little bit of a tweak here to help out with the incredibly ramped up difficulty. Uh, we're going to go into Input Hockey Binds. And uh, this is something I recommend for those of you who are acclim un acclimated to this incredibly difficult game. Go to slow motion toggle and programs to something like R1. And uh, you can push start the default to two regular where it will not affect any other perimeters in other games. But for right now, uh, we're going to leave it on R1. And then on top of that, there's another reason uh, you might want to do another tweak. And I'm going to show you here. And remember my last little demonstration a minute ago, I was unable to do anything more than a 360. Uh, let's go here and do uh, experience level here. And we're going to even play with uh, precise analog controls to boot. Let's see if we can do more than the 360 here. And note the timer at the top of the screen. When that runs out, a swarm of killer bees is going to come take me out in succession here. Okay, we got this. 720 mode activate. Oh, yeah. We did that 720 there. Let's see if we can get a better skateboard and avoid these uh, Sandra Bullock driving uh, Demolition Man cars. And we got a little bit of a score and a bonus multiplier here. Check this out. Right here. Bam! Oh yeah, let's get a better skateboard while we're at it. Oh no, we're gonna have the swimmer kill bees take me out here, but we'll take care of that in a moment. This is gonna be difficult. We don't want to wipe out because this swimmer kill bees is gonna take me out if I don't get to the park in time. Oh no, this is gonna be tough. There's a way you can avoid them though. Oh no, oh no, oh no. This sucks. This sucks. Ah. Whoa. <laughs> We don't want that, but you can go into cheats here, and we can do enable cheats, infinity area time, you don't have to worry about the bees anymore. Okay, let's try this out, and we're going to even uh, do a little bit of uh, just like, well, slow motion mode activate. And we should be able to get more precise controls to at least get acclimated to this. Again, I'm playing on expert difficulty right now, and uh, jump, well, look at that nice little shadow board. Much, much more easier to manage, but I still need to get used to the precise jumping here. Normal speed. Let's try to jump a little bit earlier. Whoa. I'm just going to fall there. Oh, yeah. Way better. Until you get used to the game, it is so nice. Yay. Oh, yeah. Look at that awesomeness there. And I really need to get used to the game. It's so difficult. See what I mean? It's the normal speed is so difficult. I'm playing nice for difficulty, like I said. Oh yeah. I failed to qualify, but you get the idea. It's such a great, great game. And we're going to try another game while we're at it again. A minute to learn, a light down to master. I mean, you can play this game for 10 hours and still not be completely accustomed to it. But we're going to do another incredible game here. We're going to play uh, Skater Die for the original NES real quick. Let's go down to the NES games, uh, a little bit farther down. Again, I have a good 200 plus games, probably 300 games on my menu right now. Uh, but yeah, 720 works so awesome, even with analog controls now. We're going to the NES games right here, and we're going to do Skate or Die. And this was, uh, like Blaster Master, it was a game that I really, really wanted. And uh, notice, even though the game was made by Konami, it says Ultra in the top left of the box out there. 
Gator or die is the ultimate party game up until Mario Party came out. But we're gonna up the ante a little bit here, going to input hockey binds again. Do slow motion mode activate real quick. And uh, we got that onto R1. And we're gonna do rewind mode activate as well. And this is a very, very special case scenario. You're gonna wanna actually do a little bit of a special Jesse Qua here. Uh, we got to go into quick menu, rewind, and enable it here after you do it in Hockey Binds. And there's a particular reason for this because it can actually crash other games and cores if you do not have it set up right. Uh, for instance, if you try running rewind support right here, it's enabled. You try running SNES 9X 2010, 16, or 18, your games will actually have stuttering. But if you run it on 2005, it runs fine. And if you try running rewind on SNES 9X, uh, should we say PlayStation Rearm Neon, it'll also have issues. It does not work well at all on PlayStation 1 games. And some arcade games, if you have it enabled, will actually crash right back to the main user interface. So I'd highly recommend turn it on while you're already in the game, test it out, and when you're done, turn it back off to avoid issues or complications. But we're going to have it on right now, we're going to do a little bit of a, a test here and see how good we do. We're going to get past Rodney Dangerfield there. Great guy. Love him and back to school. And uh, let's go into... It's not really Rodney Dangerfield, but you get the idea. It is fun how they obviously made him look like Rodney Dangerfield. We're going to do KM here. And we're going to do the high jump to start with here. Uh, we'll do goal proactive mode activate. And we're going to do high jump. Got to get used to the goofy or tricky foot here. Uh, okay, let's see if we can get anywhere in this. It's been a while. But yes, you typically pass the controller to the front. See how high they can get. We want to get at least like 10 feet if we can. We got this. I got this. 7.6. I can do better than that. I'm going to pass the controller to myself and compete against my own score. Let's try this again. I'm going to try it on my first go here. Get higher than 7.6 feet. 8.4 feet. Yes, this is so cool. You can literally just pass the controller off and have fun there. But we're going to move to another event. No, let's try another one. We'll do freestyle now. But yeah, such a cool game, and it was also incredibly difficult to buy this game, just like Blaster Master. I could never find this game anywhere for the longest time. And uh, let's see if we can do any stunts here. We'll do a plant. Okay, let's try doing uh... <laughs> this is cool. Okay, we did the hand plant. Oh no, let's rewind that. I'm gonna rewind that completely. Oh, that sucks. I need to get used to this. I'm so off with this. There we go. Slow motion. And see how long we can plant for here. I'm going to plant. I wiped out, so I'm going to rewind it. Bam. And I made it. So you can kind of see what kind of score you can get here. This was awesome. I know you guys and gals, if you try you're going to get a way higher score than me here. But let's see what I get here. I got 28.3. I can definitely do better than that, but that's so awesome. And then, of course, there are other events you can do as well. Okay, remember what I said. We're going to actually disable rewind now. Quick menu, rewind. Off. Going back to hot uh, key binds, input hot key binds. And we're going to do uh, rewind, disable that completely. Start button to rewind. Uh, take it off of there. Take off slow motion toggle, bam, now we're back to square one, we're going to exit, and we're all back uh, just fine. We're going to load up another Skater Die game, and remember what I told you about how uh, the rights to the game went on to another company? Skater Die 2, uh, the search for double trouble, look at the title screen here. Uh, electronic Arts, and that might be why we've never really seen the game much more after this. I mean, they got the rights from Konami, aka Ultra, and we're going to check this game out for a moment here. And this game is incredibly difficult. The control scheme is uh, very furry out there. And uh, look, Rodney Dangerfield. And uh, talking about Electronic Arts, who are also behind, of course, uh, Road Rash. Isn't Rodney in that game as well later on? Let's check this out. Okay. And this is kind of interesting. It's almost like uh, River City Ransom on the skateboard, if you want to think about things uh, critically. Oh, look, we got a Bart Simpson, skate, uh, Bart Simpson style gun here, shooting goo. Yes, the controls are very, very difficult to get used to. It takes a lot of getting used to. I had to push uh, A and B together to jump. Definitely not an easy game. It is so challenging. I tried playing this a while back, and I got my butt whooped because it is not at all easy to control. Bam, look. Oh, no. We've got to rewind it there. 
<laughs> yes, I'd actually recommend trying this game if you want to play something different, but if you want something that is a little bit like this that is easier to get into, try Ruler Games, another great Konami game, before Electronic uh, Arts took over Skate or Die. But uh, speaking of Skate or Die here, if you want to play a game that's a Skate or Die legacy game, we're going to go to uh, Quick Menu, Low Content. Uh, we'll actually do Low Content here. Low Content Star Trek 3 Media. Dummy, we'll go to my Game Boy folder. And we're going to load up uh, Skate or Die Bad and Rad for Game Boy, uh, the original Game Boy. And we're going to go to Load Archive and we're going to load it with the Nintendo MGBA card, which happens to load Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, as well as Super Game Boy Enhanced games. But we're going to do MGBA right now. Right here. You can also load it with uh, Gambetta and have the nice palette so it has like a Super Game Boy, uh, Super Game Boy style palette. But this is an incredibly cool game. You'll see for yourself in a moment here. And one thing I really hate is when you get stuck uh, trying to get past the introduction sequence. It's kind of like in Okami, which takes 20 minutes. So I'm going to go back in Hockey Binds. And we're going to do Fast Forward Toggle. I'm going to do uh, Fast Forward Toggle on R1. And then I'm going to do... Uh, I'll do uh, uh, Rewind as well. No, never mind. I'm just going to leave it on Fast Forward Toggle. It takes forever to get past this introduction sequence there. Because it wants to show you Electronic Arts owns the game. But we're past that now. We can start the game. Here we go. And this is such a cool game. It's even better than Skater Die 2 on NES. This is such a great game. Bam! It is a cool game. Almost like a, a runner game before runner games existed. Oh no. Oh no. Whoa! That's the part where you'd easily lose a life. But yeah, Skater Die on Game Boy is actually a cool game. And then of course there's... Oh no, that sucks. I could have ducked there. You have a health meter, as you can see. Oh no, my cat took me out, or whatever that was, a greyhound. I think it's a cat. But I love these type of games, these are so cool. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, that's where we want would have helped out. Let's see how far I can step back. There's actually a Pokemon game on the Poke Mini Core that runs like, a little bit like this too. Yes, you gotta start it over. <laughs> So it takes a little bit of practice, but this game is actually damn cool if you give it a shot. And again, you can run it on Gambetta Core as well. Whoa! But yeah, it's not rad and bad, cool game. Let's see what other kind of skateboarding games we have in our repertoire here. There are actually some cool ones on PlayStation 1 as well. We'll do uh, one of the Extreme Series ones here. We got uh, Extreme 1, Extreme 2, Extreme 3, and these actually use pixels and such. And this game right here uses uh, Polygon. So we're going to do the Polygon one, 3 Extreme. I love all of the Extreme games. Uh, this is one of the first ones that doesn't have the ESPN license. Uh, 989 Studios, they went on to make some other great racing games later on. But let's try this game for a brief moment and get some skateboard nation going here. And we have fast forward to get past the low times if we need to. Uh, we're going to do uh, Exhibition for now. And we'll do one player. Uh, we'll pick uh, Michelle Carlson. And uh, this kind of reminds me of like an earlier version of Trick Taiwan Dreamcast. So you'll see what I mean in a moment here. But yes, it has nice polygonal graphics. R1, the fast forward past that crap. Uh, let's check it out. It has some nice KMFDM style music. Kind of reminds me a bit of like industrial music in movies like, of course, Blade 1, 2, and 3. We got a little bit of a slalom thing going on here. Hopefully I can get to a jump here and do some cool stuff that I'm going to end up wiping out invariably since it's been a while since I played this. But yes, 3 Extreme is such a damn cool game. I love all three of these games. Extreme 1, 2, and 3. Slalom. Give me a jump, a ramp, or something. And you can see the drawing distance is actually cleverly masked. Oh, yeah. Oh, I did a hand plant and I failed miserably. Need a little bit of practice. And I love when you play the Tony Hawk games how you're actually doing, like, uh, starting out, like, in a little warehouse, then the ball, then you're, like, in a chasm, jumping over, like, Grand Canyon later on. It's so crazy. Takes a lot of getting used to, though. I definitely need to practice on this game. It's been a while since I last played it. Give me one more jump. Please, one more jump. There we go. I did better at the hand plant that time. I'm not quite good enough to do my 360s or 720s or 1420s and such. 1440s. But very, very cool game. We're going to do Trick Style next because Trick Style is another fantastic game. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was so cool, but yeah, so I stream, 3 stream is so great. And now we're going to load up um, one more game for this video. I'm gonna have to... Okay, 3 stream was such an incredible game, but we're going to play another game which is similarly to it uh, on Dreamcast, and we're talking about Trick Style 
fantastic game, uh, published by Acclaim, but actually made by Criterion. I'm pretty sure Criterion also made uh, my Superman Returns on Xbox 360, which is still one of my favorite games to have as a Superman game, because we know Superman does not have that many great games. I love the soundtrack here, because it kind of reminds me of uh, the Blade 3 soundtrack, which I was just watching last night. Blade 1, 2, 3, all great techno, industrial-style soundtracks. Again, developed by Criterion Studios here. And I'm running this with my analog controller. Let's try this out for a brief moment. We have extreme virtual RAM here, so if the game slows down, it'll auto memory clear and get back to full speed by itself. Let's do a little bit of a racer. I doubt I'm going to get first place, but we're going to try anyway, see what happens. But great, great game. A perfectly missed opportunity for a Back to the Future 2 style hoverboard game. Uh, we don't want to do training. We're going to just pick a uh, racer here, and uh, we'll pick Angel. And we're not worried about practice. I'm not worried about that at all right now. Okay, race. Again, if the game slows down, it'll auto memory clear by itself with extreme virtual ram here. And I don't want to practice, I'm going to pick uh, skip training. I'm going to go past this other guy right here, because I don't want to do any kind of challenges either. I just want to race. Again, the auto memory clear is going to work with extreme virtual ram. Go right past that guy. Go right to the first UK race. And the game runs pretty damn awesome considering the Mega Drive Mini has such low specs considering. Are we going to do a uh, Crash Bandicoot style selection here. And again, uh, I just watched Blade 3 last night. Great, great movie. And uh, Tour de Force Ryan Reynolds at his uh, smarky best. Just like in some of his other movies. Uh, quite a bit like he was in Deadpool, which is like a good 15 years after Deadpool, uh, after uh, Blade 3. Sounds like KMFDM style music here. Go figure. See if we can get any kind of placement here. Awesome, awesome game indeed. It's been a while since I played this, but it's always uh, been one of my favorite racing games on Dreamcast, along with Hydro Thunder. Oh, jeez. Great, great soundtrack, without a doubt. I'm not going to go out of my way to do stunt check, because I'm going to end up wiping out if I try him. I need to practice this game a little bit more. You can do like stuff like Street Illusion as well. And we got our little speed boost just like in Brocade Stage 2, another great PlayStation 1 game. I really need some practice in this game. I'm fourth place right now. And there are shortcuts, there are like tweaks like that. You can do some. Uh, <laughs> there we go. That's not the way I want to go. That guy ended up in the dead end. But I can do it right here. There we go. Fourth place. I can do better than this. I forgot how to do the illusion in this game. Right there, I forgot how to do this part. Oh, I forgot the button to do that. It's been a while. And we're going to have the auto memory clear happen again here. Soon. Come on, I'm second place. I'm doubtful that I'm going to get first place, but I'm going to try. Speed boost, bam. First place is always pretty difficult to get in a game like this. Come on, first place. Oh, no. That's close. I'm going to end up getting third place now that I did a little... Uh, Mess up there. Can I take a shortcut? No, we're gonna go right. Third place, I'm feeling miserably, and I might finish at third place. I need first place next time. Do it by practice. But damn, damn cool game. Trick style for the win here. Let's uh, go to main menu here, and let's see if we have any other games we want to try here. As much of an extreme sports fan as I am, I'm also a big wrestling fan all the way back from the 80s and such. Uh, we're going to play a Matt Mania real quick, a great title early effort. I mean, uh, titles made so many phenomenal games from the original Space Invaders up to Matt Mania, Operation Wolf, and so on. So many incredible games, even Legend of Cage out of course Nintendo and Arcade. Uh, Matt Mania doesn't have licensed characters, but it always has characters that are equivalent to their real-life counterparts, such as an Ultimate Warrior-style character. Let's see who we're going to start against here. Uh, who we're going to fight against? Who we're going to fight against? Insane Warrior, or we could call it Captain Insano if we want to, if you want to go for that little reference that I'm saying. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Give me a move here, give me a- no, no! No close lines, no elbow smash. Give me a pile driver or something, come on. I want to at least take him down one time. I need to get used to these moves, it's been a while since I last played this game. No, you're not taking me down, dude. Not gonna happen. There we go. Flying knee kick. He's gonna take me down there. Oh, jeez, that will smash. 
I want to do one power driver on him. Just one power driver. Give me one power driver. Now, I love playing pro wrestling for the original Nintendo. Oh, there we go. My power driver. I'm going to quit there. I won. Power driver. I win. But I used to love playing the original pro wrestling with Starman and doing that flip kick. I also love playing as the Amazon with the blanket style bite. Go figure. But we're going to do another WWE wrestling game. Uh, but back then it was WWF on... Particularly, I'm interested in this because they removed Hulk Hogan from my more recent wrestling games. We have uh, Superstars, WrestleFest, and WrestleMania. We're going to play Superstars first. We're going to play as Hulk Hogan here. And th this is invariably one of the coolest wrestling games of all time. Great multiplayer game. We have Hulk Hogan. We'll pick uh, Ultimate Warriors, our backup character here. We can go against Randy Macho Man Savage, Honky Tonk Man, uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and so on. Great, great cast of characters there. Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior versus Hulky Tug Man, and Randy Macho Man Savage, snap into a Slim Jim. Let's do a little bit of a power driver to start here, flying each match. I pinned him too early. We got this. I want to do a pile driver. That's what I want to do. Before I lose my energy here. We all know what happens what happens when Hulk Hogan loses his energy. He goes into rage mode. And there's a cheat that works perfectly for rage mode here. Oh, I should have ran at him the moment he lost his energy there. Let's do another power driver. Take him down a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I failed. I hit the turnbuckle. Let's pin him. Keep him uh, macho head. Oh, this is so damn cool. It's the only thing cooler than this is doing a Royal Rumble type of thing. There we go. Almost. You gotta worry about somebody coming in, the tag partner to come in and help them out too. But we can even go into uh, cheats here, enable cheats. We can do infinity energy first character if we want to, which is awesome as hell. This is great for practice if you want to get used to the game here. So no matter what they do, they're not going to be able to take me down. Let's finish this. Yeah! <laughs> Never get sold. Come on outside, come outside the ring, come on, come on, come on, you know you want it. Jeez, I have this uh, table and chair and all that fun stuff here and I can't even use it. Cause he doesn't want to come out. Let's try pinning him again. <laughs> oh jeez. I just gotta get my opponent in there. Come on, we got this. Stay down. Two. I hardly even needed to use the uh, Infinity Energy, but it's still cool to see that you can do it. But uh, speaking of title, which was uh, done with Matt Mania, we're going to move on to two more quick title games. Uh, we're going to move on to Space Invaders. Uh, where do we have Space Invaders? Right up here. There we go. And then we're going to do one final title game after that. But here's Space Invaders and great, great backdrop here. Look at this. If you play the game right now on the current Main 2003 Extreme release, uh, you do not have this great background. I mean, look at this uh, beautiful, beautiful, glorious background there. I used to play this along with Missile Command, even the original uh, ill-fated Pac-Man on the Atari 2600. But yes, I used to be able to play this game for hours on end before I'd actually lose. Great early title game. Uh, the enemies would be down as far as like the shield right here, and I'd be able to keep them going, I mean, for endless waves. But great, great game. And uh, speaking of title, let's do one more game that title did. Uh, actually, two more games that title did. Because I'm going to show you a game that you might know that title did. And then I'm going to show you a game that you might not know that title did. We're going to make uh, one of them Operation Wolf. And then we're going to do one more final, final, final title game for the end of this video. As well as a nice backdrop to give it an authentic arcade appearance. As you'll see in a moment there. Okay, let's uh, pick a stage real quick. And uh, we'll do one more title game, which you might not be aware of. I mean, this game here is quite well known, but we're going to do one that's not as well known. Uh, let's do uh, the airport as our stage here. Okay. Actually, we're doing the first stage here. Game plays so well. It's so awesome of a game here. Controls are working fantastically. Another game that's quite a bit like this is actually Duke Nukem, uh, if you've ever played that. Oh yeah, this uh, game is playing awesome. We don't want to shoot the medics. But yes, I highly recommend playing Operation Wolf. Great game, as you can see. Oh yes. 
Great game, and uh, let's do two more quick games. Again, this is made by Taito. I should have a Duke Nukem uh, arcade game as well here. Let's try that for a brief moment, which is another game that got fixed up. It should be right in my list here under D. Let's make sure of that real quick. Hopefully I put it on the list. Uh, where do we have Duke Nukem? Dynamite Duke is what I meant, not Duke Nukem. Dynamite Duke. But I think of Duke Nukem, even though it's uh, Dynamite Duke. I'm going to think of it as Duke Nukem forever time. Let's try this game out for a brief moment. Then we'll do one more title game. See, I love this type of game. This Unreal uh, shooter game. This is so cool. And you can play Nom 1975 for Neo Geo, which is quite a bit like this as well. But this game had uh, incorrect colors, which were fixed up recently. Thank you again, personal thanks to Grant2258, RK2003, and Mark WK for helping out extensively with some of the main 2003 Extreme Editions. But yes, Dynamite Duke is a great game, but I'm still going to call it Duke Nukem because it is uh, better than some of the last Duke Nukem games that we played anyway. There we go, we've got full auto here. And we're going to do one more title game after this, but yes, uh, Dynamite Duke, aka Duke Nukem in my opinion, is a great game. Playing awesome here. Oh, uh, what do we have here? We're gonna do a game that many of you might not be even aware of called Thunder Fox, another great title game. Okay, here we go. We have Thunder Fox on my list here. Should be down in the T's. Right there, another great game, and this is one of the lesser known games. Thunder Fox is such an underrated title, just like Power Blade, which was also made by, of course, title. Great, great game here, and uh, definitely check it out. Uh, let's play this for a couple minutes. We'll get to the first stage here. Beautiful, beautiful game. Love the way these special effects are in this game. It has everything from lightning effects right there. I mean, you see the lightning, but you know what's going to happen by looking back at the clouds in the background. Just watch and watch what happens. But great, great game. Very, very well made. There's so many cool things here. Maybe I want this weapon. Oh, look at that awesome weapon. Bam! Let's take them enemies out with a little chain reaction, Angry Bird style. Definitely recommend playing this game. Very, very cool indeed. Look at that awesome rain effect. And if you play some Natsumi games, uh, on of course NES, they do rain effects too. I mean, I love games when they try to take on water and rain effects because they're not at all easy to do. And obviously, Tecmo did a good job with Ninja Game 2 and its rain effects too. Let's try to get to the first stage here. And uh, we gotta at least take out the first boss here. Here we got a little uh, jeep we can take on. Vehicle style. Oh no, we got a grenade there. Don't explode on me. Please don't explode. We got this, guys and gals. We got this. We should be near. Oh, that sucked. <laughs> Great sound check as well. But yes, we're gonna be nearing the end of the first stage here in a moment here. And there are so many title games. I mean, like I said, they did Legend of the Cage. Uh, there's so many other cool games. Lunge in a Cage is another game where you can literally hold down the turbo button and be pretty much invulnerable. Okay. Okay, we should be nearing the boss here. And it's a boss that you can't just go up and attack. You have to use a little bit of strategy to take it out. You'll see in a moment here. I'm going to end up losing a couple lives here. I feel it. We got a grenade there. The grenades are what you're going to need to use against the boss. Oh, I died before I could. We'll try this again. Need a grenade to take the boss out. Bam! There we go. Grenades are what you need for this boss. There we go. Getting there. Give me another grenade. Throw a grenade out at me. Come on. We got this. There we go. Oh, that was a mess. I'll do it this time. Third time's the charm. There we go. There we go. We'll see what the second stage is like. But very, very cool. I love when you literally have to use a little bit of strategy here. I mean, some people might just go up and try to punch or kick it. But look at this awesomeness. Let's see what's in the second stage for a brief moment here. But hope you enjoyed the video, guys and gals. And uh, I'll showcase more maybe tomorrow before the release. Look, we got a shmup stage of all things. And we all know Tidal has made shmup games in the past, too. But awesome, awesome stuff here. Note that Taito also made that uh, uh, game I showcased with Superman in yesterday's video.